So today we're bringing one friend and a puppy into our mix today, which I'm really excited about. Same. Yeah. Um, I think it was Kaylin who said that like, it's like a throuple that we bring friends into. Was that you? (laughs) I think it was. (laughs) Well, that's what we're doing today. So (laughs) hopefully Morgan uh, gave us permission to throuple her. (laughs) Quadruple her. (laughs) Exactly. That's true. Yeah. It is no longer three. So that is, we're changing around a little bit about the, um, the podcast format. We wanted to mix it up a little bit. We started to do some, some guest interviews. I think it was last year actually, mm-hmm. but just the format wasn't quite aligned with us. So I think we cracked the code. I think we figured it out mm-hmm. um, and we'll test it for a while. And if it doesn't, the format will change again because it's our podcast. We can do whatever the hell we want. <laughs> exactly. And we do. And we do. <laughs> That's true. Listeners, we love you. We love that you join us. But also, this is our podcast. So <laughs> it's yeah. on our calendar, as we've mentioned before, as our therapy session. So you're welcome for our therapy session that has been pressed recorded. Now other people are invited to, which makes a total ton, ton of sense. It's time for my mental health plug. If your therapist isn't serving you, you should always move on. So if the podcast format isn't serving us, we will move on. I thought you were going to say if our podcast isn't serving you, please move on. Well, that too. That too. <laughs> you're welcome to do that, but we know that it does. So <laughs> Oh, that's where I thought we were going for that. We were we made it this far. We know that it does. We, I had one um, woman who I was talking to about being a guest and she was like, I'm crazy, but you guys are extra crazy. <laughs> she, she listened to a few episodes. She's like, I mean, I was just hearing boobs everywhere. I was just, I was like, wow. I thought I was crazy. You guys are like over the top. I'm like, yeah. Well, but did she say she wanted to come on the podcast? That's my question. A thousand percent. Okay, cool. <laughs> and we, we've got her booked already. So you will be hearing from her. <laughs> Honestly, this is what I, I feel pretty deeply is that we are not any more crazy, right? Than anybody else, but Our crazy is that we're willing to just say it. Yes, exactly. Not be ashamed to say it and say what people are thinking and talk about the things that people might be embarrassed to talk about or say. So that's where the crazy comes from. The the crazy isn't the the things that we say. The Mm -mm. crazy is the the fact that we say it on a public platform. Yes, that Mm -hmm. we press record, which was our promise. That's the whole premise. That's our only premise of the podcast. If we don't have that, we don't have a podcast. It's like (laughs) Seinfeld, the show about nothing. It's the podcast that records everything. (laughs) (laughs) No, no bars held, no bar, no held bar. What's the phrase? Bars held. Yes. Okay. I think I said- No holds barred. No holds barred. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. We all arrived. (laughs) So do we want to give another exciting update about what's happening this week? Because I'm really- You don't talk about Bruno? (laughs) Oh. We can talk about Bruno, but let's talk about the more exciting thing is that I get to see you both in like 36, well, 24 and then 36 hours. I'm going to check in for my flight pretty soon. Oh, I did that this morning at five o'clock. It was so good. Yeah, I need to, I need to do that. Woohoo! We are going to Savannah. I have we told anyone why we're going embarking on an epic journey that will probably change the entire trajectory of everything that we're doing. <laughs> we can tell that's fine. Yeah. So. Tell them, tell them what kind of is the focal point for at least one of the days. My mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, that's good. I have teeth that up. No. Um, <laughs> I have had a hard time finding a dentist who doesn't feel like they're just patching over like work. And I had, didn't go to the dentist when I was a kid. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that's like systematically, uh, kind of fundamentally wrong with my bite and my, my gums and things of that nature. Like you wouldn't know it by looking, but like under the hood, there's like mm-hmm. some check engine lights on, if you will. Mm-hmm. My car analogies has always comes through. <laughs> so, um, I needed to, I don't know if we did say this on the podcast. I needed to book, I found a place that I felt really comfortable with, um, got kind of my estimate and it's kind of bringing me back to square one to get everything done. Um, and to like, not have anything else to worry about. Obviously things can creep up in the future, but like to not have anything else to worry about for the first time in, in my adult life. 
So, um, Kaylin is coming to babysit me and Jade is coming to record me is how I'm saying it. <laughs> because <It's true. laughs> And I'm like, if that's how it, what it takes for us to go viral, I mean, I'll, I'm willing to drool on myself. I'm willing to act probably, I mean, you guys, they've never seen me, but like after postpartum or like postpartum and C-section mm-hmm. medicines, traditional medicines stay in my system forever and have just like a residual effect on me. Like I stayed numb after C-section for close to 30 hours like from just an anesthesiologist, like that's just some, I'm interested to see how um, sedation for this dentistry works and being with them and making sure I don't do anything really dumb. <laughs> so you're going to be there in time, right? Kaylin, for us both to pick her up. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, you guys will have a car. So Jade, you're driving her to the her there. That's but right. I, I will drop Hayden off at school on Thursday morning and then drive straight to Savannah. My goal is so Kennedy's naps in the morning have been his best. And so I am going to feed the ever loving shit out of him before taking Hayden to school (laughs) and then just drive as long as he will let me. So it's only four hours, like a little actually less than if I don't stop. So I'm hoping that I can just like go, maybe take like one stop and then be there. So if I'm leaving after dropping him off at school, that's before eight o'clock. So I could be there by noon. Yeah, Nine. we're only, to be fair, the Airbnb, and this is probably some way too much for the listeners from a logistics standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> it's only half. I know y'all are very interested <laughs> in how this is going to work out. <laughs> If you could care less about the logistics, skip to part two. No. <laughs> That's why I was like, you guys started talking like, okay, I'm going to drop this off. Like, is this podcast worthy? Really? I was like, wait, we're recording. I forgot for a second. It just started talking. <laughs> oh, we're going to hit logistics and it's going to be worth it. Okay. So as we said before, this is recorded exactly as it's supposed to be. And <laughs> Now you guys know what's really happening. So if you want to message Kaylin, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Kaylin will be driving. You know, I'll be in the car on <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> oh, so yes, that's happening. And then what's um, exciting as well, and this is kind of transitions us for a little bit of aligned stuff, um, is that I kind of got this massive download last night and kind of blueprint as to really embrace the changes that are happening and to really like make a well-defined mission, a well-defined vision, a well-defined core values. And then um, had some kind of things already come through surrounding that, but basically make us a template for that. Have us do what we did to create, you know, all of the entities that we created on a big piece of paper on a spreadsheet and then have kind of our boys from our executive team weigh in. So Hold on. Are you telling me that I get to bring this poster paper that I've been holding on to since our last visit? You know what? You can. I was going to put it online, but you know what? We can go. Yes. Bring your markers, Bring Caitlin. the bring. markers. Bring the poster paper. This is why you're driving. So you can bring. Yeah. But I was also thinking like, I don't want to do it just sitting in front of a computer or sitting in front of a poster board. Like I'd like us to, you know, be able to like go take a walk or go to the beach, like kind of have our relive our, relive our first date, if you will, where I asked oh you to marry God. me, both of yes. you. Like, our proposal. It's our anniversary. I'm like, I feel like I need to break down on a beach to get to the next level for some reason. Weird. <laughs> Weird, Worked exactly. Last time. Um, but yeah, the card that just fell out, as I was saying, it says they broke your heart and then fuck them. So I guess, (laughs) I guess the cards that speak have just, (laughs) um, we're basically doing a little bit of cleanup and just reorganizing aligned and making sure that no pun intended aligned is aligned. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's really kind of, I think it's poetic that it is all happening simultaneously and. You know, my mouth is the reason that's bringing us together. <laughs> that big, beautiful mouth of yours. Oh, you got a great way of just speaking about things. I thought you were going to say you got a pretty mouth, but you know, you left me hanging there. <laughs> I mean, Jay did say your big, beautiful mouth. So like, I can't follow that with anything. <laughs> no, you can't. So anyway, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, a little so. bit of travel. Without further ado, do we introduce 
the lovely guest that's joining us today. Yeah, I think we do. I think Jade, I feel like you can actually, you did it kind of on the, I did. Yeah. When we recorded, I, yeah. When we recorded, I kind of uh, introduced her. You guys, I've always wanted to say this ready. What? Morgan, it is so nice to have you with us today. Um, Especially because I got to chat with you a little bit yesterday. So I'd love to just take the opportunity to introduce you to whoever is listening and do it in my favorite way, which is to explain your sun sign, moon sign, and rising, Mm because it's a really fun combo with the sun in Capricorn and the moon in Scorpio and your rising in Aquarius. And I think it's really, um, we share the four, six splenic authority in human design, but you are a generator like our Kaylin here. So we you love know how generator. to get, oh, we love generators so much. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine a generator with a Capricorn sun? You guys, Ooh. I know I'm like, would you, do you need a contract? Do you need a job? Just asking not for a friend. <laughs> yeah. She knows how to get stuff done. Would you agree with that? Morgan. Absolutely. I, even in the corporate world, I was the go-to person, anything that needed done, whether it was travel arrangements, renegotiating a contract, finding new clients, I was the go-to person. And that's an energy I've had to learn how to harness. And I've had to learn how to like step into my divine feminine and be more receptive and learn how to ask for help because I'm like, I'm capable to a fault, right? I can do it all on my own, just like so many women, right? But just because hey, I know <laughs> doesn't mean that's the path of most healing. Often the path of most healing isn't asking for help, but it has been fun seeing what I can do now that I'm in more aligned work uh, with all that energy. And I just need to make us a, a small correction, which is that while you have a beautiful splenic authority, I have a sacral authority. Sacral authority. Which right. Is very right. different. That's very, <laughs> very, very different. Thank very you different. for making <laughs> thank you for making Finally, that. I have a tie to you. I have a sacral authority. <laughs> All right. And you get it. You get that conversation, those yes or no questions we have to answer whenever we're trying to make a decision. <laughs> Absolutely. That is important. Mm-hmm. I can relate so much with the need to learn how to accept help, even though you can do it all, or you could get it all yourself, but then it's like, what do you lose if you do it all yourself? Absolutely. And one of the things that I found so empowering is, so I love it when people ask me for help, right? Especially now that I've learned how to set boundaries and say no. And it's such an honor when someone comes to me and says, I have a problem and I think you can help me solve it. Like, oh, I'd love to, I have some time. Um, whether it's, you know, through something that I do for work and you can pay me or whether it's something that we're going to do from through some more uh, other energy exchange, but I get to give that gift to someone else when I ask for help, right? It's not just about like, I'm placing this burden on them. Like I'm giving them the honor of having this problem that they can solve really easily. That's going to be a huge pain for me to solve, right? Of course I could move this couch all by myself. But if I ask my neighbor for five minutes of his time, we're now going to have this core memory together and we'll be able to like nod at each other in the hall. It's like, oh, remember that time we moved the couch together? (laughs) (laughs) Was there a tipping point and a change in your like life where this transition happened where you were like, oh shit, I should really ask for help. Yeah, I got laid off. (laughs) (laughs) How long ago was that? That was, uh, oh gosh, it was a long time ago, seven years ago. Um, I had I had a, a, a phoenix rising moment where in the course of a few months, I lost my job of seven years. I lost my relationship of seven years. And then I had a grievous injury. I tore my ACL and had a two-year recovery period with Ooh, multiple surgeries. That must have been 2013 or 2014. Do you think that was, that was when all that happened? It wasn't, no, it was it wasn't years after that. No, okay. what happened that year is I moved to London to live with a boyfriend. We had, we had just bought a house together in Santa Barbara. He was transferred to London a week after we closed. Per the universe was like, stay apart. And instead I went to London and I got deported because I didn't, I only had a passport. I didn't have a visa. So, and then I got banned for 10 years. That's what happened 10 years ago. I figured it out. (laughs) Love a good deportation story. Damn, Damn. that's a story. We don't have time today, but I would love to know that story. (laughs) I'm like, so are you allowed in London? (laughs) 
it's so been the 10 years. years up literally this year Good. and I don't think I'm ever going to go back to the UK. I kind of had my UK experience. I don't need any more of the homelands. <laughs> How long were you there before you got deported? Do you mind if I ask? So I was traveling there a lot for six months, like once a month, okay. once or twice a month. And then um, I was living there for three months but because I was coming and going so often and going through border patrol, even though I had a perfectly plausible reason it was the year of the Olympics and it was the year of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. So it was just like wrong place, wrong time. But also the universe was like, maybe you shouldn't be dating this dude. Like yeah. maybe you should go home and break up with him. <laughs> Morgan kindly exit stage right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It's funny book. how she does that. If you don't listen, she's like, you're going to do this now then. You can do it easy or you can do it hard. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and then it'll come up again later on in life as a pattern for you to make that mm -hmm. easy decision. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's just happened. I just had a similar relationship with a lot of the same issues that instead of just being like, guess I'm going for it. I was like, guess I have standards now. Mm -hmm. And I ended the relationship in a really healthy way. And we get to be friends and, you know, it always sucks to end a relationship that was once very happy and, and meaningful and realize we have to downgrade it for a little while. Um, but I felt like I was a little pat on my back of like, oh, I've healed this pattern. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I wonder what comes next. Now I'm on a new journey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your soul um, just like leveled up a little bit. You're like, oh yeah. <laughs> totally. I mean, that's the advantage of eclipse energy, right? If you're willing to make those cuts, if you're willing to say goodbye to what's not truly working for your highest healing, there's a little reward and it comes in the form of that deep inner joy where it's like no matter what happens I get to live at this level of joy yeah there's going to be other emotions in the spectrum as well but I know I can always come back to this new level of joy and healing mm, drop the mic done okay. <laughs> well said <laughs> and out I told you guys she was in a beautiful human a beautiful human I was so excited to have you on the podcast so 20 like 16 all of this went down where you were forced to change your patterns of doing everything yourself and, and ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. So because I tore my ACL, I had just adopted this little dog who you may have heard coughing in the background mm -hmm. and I couldn't walk like myself to the bathroom, let alone walk my dog. So I had to ask my neighbors for help. And fortunately I had just bought this little condo in Santa Barbara where I was basically living with the golden girls. It was like all these older mm -hmm. women, they all had puppies. And as soon as they heard that I was hurt every single day, multiple times a day, someone would come by to walk spike. They would come by to drop off at, you know, peaches from the farmer's market. They would bring me groceries. They would make sure I had rides to my doctor's appointment. And they were like, I, I barely had to ask. They just knew how to do it. So that's when I realized like, oh, this is just what we do for each other. Mm -hmm. And then I started reading more of the yoga sutras. I've been a yoga teacher now for 12 years. And one of the things they teach us in the yoga sutras is the whole reason we came here is to help each other, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes part of that help is, yes, learning how to set boundaries because it is easy to be a people pleaser because it is nice to help people. And there's some trauma that feeds into that as well. Um, but when you are actually saying an aligned yes, that full body yes to like, not only do I want to help you with this, but like, it's going to be fun. We're going to enjoy it. It's like when you go to your friend's house, like it's easier to clean their house and do their dishes than it is to do your own dishes because you get that little gift of gratitude, right? Like, oh, I'm doing something nice and, and this person is grateful for it. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I know it is such an interesting kind of juxtaposition, if you will, of like my everything inside me says yes to this because of course I want to do this. Of course I want to help you, but let me pause and let me think, is it? the part of me that is just trying to please, or is it the part of me that wholeheartedly actually wants to do this? And it is such a thing that you need to practice and learn, especially when you're a doer, because it's like, can I do this? Yeah, I can do this. Okay. I'll do it. Like, I care about you. Of course I'll do it. But then it's like, wait, do I want to do this? Do I know what I want? I get that. Been there. There right now, actually, let's be honest. <laughs> For those who are aren't visually watching the podcast, Kaylin was over there preaching and waving her hands and snapping and, and to every <laughs> word that Morgan was saying. You just need the visual to go along with this podcast. I, I feel like the generator in both of them is just um, like they're speaking each other's language. They right are. Now. And it's really fun to watch, actually. 
I will say though, it's more than just a generator thing. I do wonder what your Enneagram is because I know a lot of other generators that aren't like that, that aren't like do, do, do for others and not like, there's a, there's a bit of a trauma response there. Um, and so I feel like there's, well, I can say from an astrological perspective, because I've (laughs) seen both of your charts, you both have your moons at the top of your chart. And that's a huge near your MC line. And that is your moon is your feminine. It's also your emotional body. It's who you are when your back's against the wall and your moon is at the top of the chart, which means it's there to be seen and to serve. And you feel good when you're serving, but that can so easily, as you guys are explaining, go awry. So that's a huge part of it. (laughs) Thank you. <laughs> and that's where developing my relationship to my sacral authority specifically has been such a game changer in terms of how I offer myself to the world, how I say yes to opportunities mm-hmm. and how I say no to opportunities, because so often saying no means that someone else gets to say yes. And my network is so vast at this point that often I can be like, oh no, but I know exactly who can help you. I can connect you, right? Maybe I can't mm-hmm. do this myself, but I can still give a, a little bit. I can send a text real quick and see if there's something that can be done. But yeah, that desire to help other people, that definitely stems from parental stuff, right? When you have to people please your parents and make sure everything's stable in the house, that's going to definitely bleed into your later life and your later relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting that something that you said about um, feeling like, oh, well, I have a network of people that I can reach out to that can help you if I can't. And I feel like there as women, I know, I know we've talked about this in podcasts in the, in the past, but we have this level of competition, like, oh, well, you know, there's not enough room for all of us. There's only enough room for a few of us. And what you said, I think plays into the fact that no, there absolutely is room for all of us. And even from a business opportunity, like I, I, I want to give somebody else the opportunity to say yes, or someone else the opportunity to grow or to, you know, help, help them. Um, and that there is enough room for all of us to succeed. And there's enough room for all of our gifts and, and all of us to do well in, in this life. So that's it right there. Absolutely. We need more of that. (laughs) I completely agree with that. I say this a lot in my meditation work um, when Mm -hmm. I'm guiding meditations, but there's nothing in this world that only one of us can have, right? Everything worth having in this world, all of us can have it. All right. We can't all have like the giant house in Malibu. We can't all squeeze in there, but we don't all need the giant house in Malibu, but we all need a place where we feel secure and safe. That feels like a sanctuary, Mm -hmm. right? We all have that feeling. Yeah. So when you allow the story to take its own individual individualization for each person's highest healing, I think it makes it easier to feel the natural abundance of the world and how much we all get to have, not to ignore that there are definitely some systemic issues that are preventing people from having their divine birthright of joy and abundance. There are definitely those issues that we're working through on this earth, but the more you can be grateful for where you are in this moment, the easier it is to welcome in more. Totally. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, You said something interesting. You noted Malibu again. Are you still living in California? So I'm a slow mover. I I am still living in California. I am currently, my main address is in Los Angeles. I have rented a place in Yucca Valley near Joshua Tree in the desert. I have been welcomed in by the desert with open arms and very grateful for it. I'm working on a few creative projects right now. Um, I'm writing a a few different books. I'm a writer and performer. I guess that's why I ended up in Los Angeles. (laughs) Um, Funny. (laughs) (laughs) uh, But LA is psychically very loud to me. And while it can be very easy to manifest here, if you aren't very clear on what you want, you get steamrolled so yes. fast. So the whole time I've been living in LA, I've, I've, I travel half the year. I love to travel. Um, but for this year, I needed more stability. So I'm taking the next few months to slowly but surely inch out of LA, move closer into to Joshua Tree, where mm-hmm. I've been invited in. My best friend just moved there a few months ago. I went to visit him for a weekend. Mm-hmm. And I saw this flyer in this tiny place called Pioneer Town, which is this old Hollywood town turned tourist trap, Mm -hmm. um, saying there was this this creative shack for rent. And it was so well within my budget. It said, don't text. I don't have a cell phone call. So initially I was like, (laughs) is this like a Hills Has Eyes situation? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> some creepy house. But no, it was this incredible woman who we actually know some of the same people in Santa Barbara where she she lives. She has some family there. She grew up all over the world. She's lived in the desert for 23 years. She knows so many fascinating people. And she welcomes me in with open arms. And it's like, literally, it's the property is uh, right next to this uh, uh, national park that's uh, called Santa or Snow to, what is it? Santa Snow Summit National mm. Park. And mm -hmm. A lot of S's in there. Um, which is just basically this giant quartz field. Like it just glitters and sparkles. So it's this very healing desert energy um, that Spike and I have been invited into. And yeah, it's been really beautiful. She's been setting me up with work there. I've been dating and the dating scene has been really interesting. And I had, I'd never been there before. I had no idea this place was there. Right down the street is this like world-class restaurant and this music venue where almost every night they have live music. I love live music. It's wow. like my place. And then there's this place called Giant Rock about like eight miles away, which is where all this crazy, you may have heard of it, all this, it's uh, famed in certain communities. A lot of UFO activity, they say out there, it's not something I have any personal experience with or subscribe to in any capacity, but yes. that's what it's known for. <laughs> yes. Um, and then there's there's uh, a lot of um, shaman energy around there as well from, from the people who actually are supposed to be living there from the natives and their energy that they left there to protect the land. So yeah, it's very sacred. I'm very grateful to be there. And the writing has been has been going off since I've been moving there. So I'm excited for these books to get finished. Wow. Wow. So how, when are you going to be fully transitioned to living there? My goal, as I said, I'm a slow mover. I, I like to take my time. Um, so my goal is in the next two months. So I'll oh. get there right at, right at the height of, of the heat. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds amazing. I want to visit. That's You're all. You're welcome to visit. It's a wonderful place to visit. Yeah, tons of great Airbnbs out there. Um, it's it's a really special place. It's a nice escape from LA, that's for sure. Wow, that literally sounds so divine. Just all of the puzzle pieces falling into place. Just the fact that you were out there, that you saw the flyer, like, wow. And it checks all of your boxes that you didn't know that you were setting out to be checked. Like, how? I know. Totally. Yeah, and it, was, it was a big act of surrender walking into that. And mm -hmm. the landlord told me like she'd actually had the flyer up for a few months and okay. no one else had responded. I was the only person to respond. It's because I was like, was waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. It's yours. Like, yeah. Call? I don't want to call. I want to text. I don't want this place. Yes. <laughs> or they're like, this has to be a scam. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a big element of trust. If I hadn't been with my best friend at the time, who like is a really, really good at reading my energy and helping me understand, like, this is the two thumbs up. Um, I probably wouldn't have had the nerve to call because I was there with my bestie. I was like, let's give it a try. We'll see what happens. I love the power of numbers. But I'm right. Crazy There's something to say about best friend energy, because it truly like takes you outside of your comfort zone, takes you completely like to places that you may not choose, but you need. So yes, we're talking <laughs> as we'll be, we'll be together in about 24 hours. So <laughs> we're kind of, yeah. you kind of hit us at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> so Beautiful. Oh man, that's awesome. I love that. So what are you, so you said you have some books that you are finishing up. What, what are they? What are you writing about? Can you tell us? So there are two main problems that my clients have that I've been working on them for the past seven years. And I've become something of an expert in these two fields. One is building a spiritual business in a world while patriarchal capitalism fails us miserably. Mm. So it's how to build a business in alignment. It's basically the opposite of what you would learn in an MBA, but like in the best way. <laughs> we get that. We say <laughs> that all the time. Literally. <laughs> Literally. We make business decisions and Cass all the time will be like, oh man, the, the professors at Stanford would hate us right now. Oh yeah. no. no. But it's okay. <laughs> Yes. Well, that's the difference between doing something for money and doing something for energy, right? Mm -hmm. Very different rules. So that's um, the business of yoga. And that's also a live workshop that I offer at different yoga studios is I, I focus on yoga teachers because I'm a yoga teacher, but the principles extend to the, the healing arts. I work also with a lot of massage therapists, sound healers, even medical doctors who are like, I can't do the Western thing mm -hmm. anymore. Like, teach me your ways. How do I make this a more holistic business? Can I yoga? Um, what type of yoga do you teach? 
I am trained in so many different types of yoga. I've done over a thousand hours of training. Mm -hmm. I focus, um, so when I teach in a studio, I typically teach restorative yoga with Reiki and, uh, and then I do the exact opposite. I do like the loud, sweaty, hot vinyasa, like dance yeah, party yoga as well. I like, I like the spectrum. <laughs> totally. I never get to get jam out on yoga anymore. So I'm like, Oh, how exciting. It is. It is fun. Yeah. Yeah. The studio work comes and goes in my practice, but it is nice to get out to a studio every once in a while and just lead a group of people through a sweaty flow. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> So do you um, have a, a publishing company or are you going to self-publish? Like what's your, what's your goal? No, I self-publish everything. Um, I find that it just works better for the people I'm trying to reach. So mm. if a publishing company wanted to reach out, I can surrender to that. I'm not putting any effort into that. I've self-published yeah. a few books. It's very easy and I love doing it. So I don't yeah. have a problem with that. That's, that's awesome. Well, you'll have to let us know when your books are complete and live, because I'd love to link them out in our, in our show notes and, and back in your show notes too. So Definitely. yeah. And until then, where can we, we send people to find you and keep, keep up with you? So check out my Instagram. It's splendid.yoga, splendid.yoga Instagram, or um, you can find me also on Facebook. You can find my Facebook group. It's called Passive Income for Healers. And I bet I can send the notes to you. you guys can put those in the show yep. notes. Absolutely. We can absolutely link that out. Well, cool. Any, any words of wisdom that you could leave us with? Any tidbits from your book? Absolutely. Um, you're right where you need to be. Everything you're doing is working towards your big goals. Work from a place of joy and you'll get to your big goals a lot sooner. But all that means is that you have to dream bigger and make bigger goals. So there's no rush. There's no hurry. You're right where you need to be. Mm. Uh, we, we felt that deeply. Seriously. <laughs> Thank you. I know. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> me too. I was like, <laughs> thanks. Thanks <laughs> I really appreciate that. We see Spike one more time because we're yes, just- the listeners need to see Spike. This is Spike, you guys. Oh my god, so Spike is perfection. You're if you're listening to- on Spotify, you need to go to our YouTube and and watch the video so you can see Spike. He's so he's cute. just we adorable. Hope you enjoy the quartz field. We hope it's healing energy for you too. He oh. loves it. He's befriending all the coyotes out there. They howl to each other. Awesome. Oh my god, meet their leader soon. <laughs> oh, love it. Thank you so much for, for being here. I knew it'd be yes. great. It's even better than I thought. Thank it's my you, pleasure. Morgan. Thanks to you all for doing your work and spreading these voices around. It's lovely. Yes. Well, as expected, that was a lovely interview. I really enjoyed talking to Morgan the first time we met and it was as lovely as I thought. I'm sure you all enjoyed it too. So thanks to Morgan uh, for joining us today. Yes. And I, as a generator, love every moment of that. And she was just speaking to me directly. So mm-hmm. more of you, we like <laughs> you. And I think our whole mission in life is just to surround ourselves with like thousands and thousands of generators. What do you think? I mean, I've never, never disliked a generator that I was tied to, to work with. I mean, you got to love them. It's true. So all of Morgan's stuff will be in the show notes though. So you guys can follow along with her journey and see the books that she's writing and follow along with Spike and see her new adventure in her, I think she called it the creative shack in uh, at the quartz mine. 